Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Monday. And it's a pretty downbeat Monday, I would say, after what happened at the Emirates last night. Of course, Arsenal losing 3-0 to Brighton. Um, and that's that <laughs> when it comes to the title race. No coming back from that. Really disappointing day, strange day, weird day, to be honest. I was, I went up there early, I was walking around outside the Emirates, walking around Holloway and Holloway Road and... You could feel everyone was, there was a lot of hope that Everton were going to do something against Manchester City. You could feel it, you could hear it, people were talking about it. And I think everyone was quite, you know, everyone was looking at that game thinking this is this is going to be tough for City, this, they could drop points here. And I think the fact that City won it so comfortably, you could sense it, you could sense the energy sucked out of the place before the game. I could feel, even in the press room, you know, and there's not many Arsenal fans down there in the press room. There's <laughs> not many Arsenal fans, uh, sort of, as journalists who are covering the club, obviously there's a few. But even then, you could just feel the sort of, it was like, oh, well, that's that. And I wonder if that played a part. I don't know. I mean, who, who knows? But I, I certainly felt it in the stadium. And whether that factored into the players' performance, I don't know. Man, uh, Mikel Arteta said it didn't after the game. But it, it was just a weird day. And you kind of got the sense that, Arsenal were going to drop points I did anyway from uh, just before the game when it started as it started to go on I mean look if they'd got themselves in front I think they might well have gone on and won it but you just got the sense I did anyway it was just had that feeling of it of this is going to be the day that it ends and it was and it, ended, it was pretty embarrassing by the end it was an awful defeat second half was just a just a car crash really Arsenal you know from the moment they went behind they just didn't have that energy that they've had all season that vibrancy that belief almost you know seen so many times and fight back this season but they never looked like doing it yesterday there just wasn't that belief and I think again that probably was something to do with what happened at Everton early in the game they knew I think they knew it was probably done before kickoff and as soon as when they went behind they just didn't have it in them to come back one last time this season and Brighton in the end ran out comfortable winners I mean I didn't I thought the substitutions were poor by Arteta especially taking Odegaard off I didn't understand that and there was just no midfield left by the end of the game you know Thomas Partey was basically there on his own you know it's, it's a Thomas Partey and not in the best of form and suddenly he's literally there on his own being swamped by Brighton players and it was you know, every time they went forward they looked like they were going to score by the end that Arsenal had lost all shape there was no no coming back so I didn't think the substitutions helped but you know, the game was done and dusted before then, really. Brighton were deserving winners. I thought Brighton were excellent. They're such a good team, Brighton. Really, I love watching them. And um, De Zerbe's a top-quality coach. And, you know, they, it was real high-risk stuff from them. Could have, could have been, They could have been made to pay in the first half with some of their sort of... The way they were playing out from the back. Arsenal was so, so close to shutting them down and having a, you know, a real clear shot on goal from it. But they kept on doing it. It was really high-risk stuff. And they got their reward in the end. And... Some really good performances from them. Caicedo is fantastic at right back. What a player he is. Colwell was fantastic, I thought, for them as well. Matoma absolutely destroyed Ben White. It was the, you know some really good performances from them, and they ran out deserving winners. And um, and I think it's great that they're going to be in Europe because they absolutely deserve it because they've played some really good stuff this season. And I think if they can keep hold of Deserby, they're going to be really really strong next season as well. And but for Arsenal, it was just a disappointing day. It's like I think the saddest thing was. Certainly the mood that I was in when I left the stadium was it was just a shame that it all sort of ended like that because it's been such a great season and I've loved this season. It's been so much fun to be there, to follow them home and away, to see the wins, some of the wins they've got, the performances away from home against big teams where they were playing. You know, there was it's just been great. It's been, I haven't felt like this watching Arsenal for a long, long time this season. So it's just sad that it kind of all petered out the way it did and it ended in that really demoralising defeat at home in front of empty seats because a lot of people left. And I'm not surprised people left. You know, they've supported Arsenal so well this season at the Emirates. But I think yesterday everyone was just so, it was just so disappointing that, um, you know, it wasn't, they weren't leaving out of disgust at the performance or anything like that. I think they were leaving, they left early a lot of them just because they were so kind of just demoralised and it was just a sad way to end. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine, you know, the Wolves game at the end of the season, you're not going to have loads of empty seats then. I think everyone's going to give the team a deserved sort of send-off at the end of the game uh, after that one. But yesterday, I could totally understand why there were so many empty seats. And, and Mikel Arteta was as despondent as I've ever seen him after the game. He came in, you could see how down he was, you could hear how down he was, he was struggling to talk. 
that sounded really emotional and it was as as despondent as I've seen Arteta and you could see it re- he was really really hurt I think he was pretty shocked by the performance but I think he was really really hurt as well and that came across in a lot of what he had to say after the game um he said when we I'm mean, sure you've seen some of these quotes but I thought I'd go through some of them because I thought it was a really interesting press conference from Mikel um, for a few reasons, but you know, he apologised. Obviously, he said to, uh, he said it was a really different feeling to what we had last Sunday against Newcastle, when we felt proud and we did everything we did to needed to win the game. In certain moments, today was completely opposite. We have to apologise to our people, especially for the second half. And went on and said, like, obviously, what we've done the last ten months is very different to what anyone expected, and that generates a lot of expectation as well as happiness and joy. That's something that has to be managed. Um, in the right way and we have to take responsibility to make sure the team performs and I am responsible for that so I hate the feeling of letting people down when they are expecting something that's the biggest regret I have today and I have to apologize for that I'm not sure Arteta has anything to apologize for I don't think the players have anything to apologize for but I can understand how they were feeling like that and I think they were just really disappointed that like Arteta says there, it kind of felt like they'd let people down with that performance and that result. They wanted to go out and really push City all the way, but to kind of lose it so meekly like that, they I think they felt really responsible for that. And you could hear by Martin Odegaard's interview after the game and Arteta here, they just felt, they ju- they were just really, really low. And, um, and yeah, I thought it was disappointing. But then I thought it was really interesting some of the stuff Arteta said through the downbeat stuff, through the apology. He was already looking to next season. And when I speak to a lot of people who work with Arteta, who know Arteta a lot better than I do, the overriding thing I get from them is that how determined he is to keep improving, to to win, to not settle for anything other than the very, very sort of best. And I thought that came across in his interview yesterday after the game. He was immediately seemed to be looking towards next season and almost doubting some of the players and basically saying we need to improve if we want to compete in the champions league next season we can't afford to play like this we can't afford to let things slip sort of mentally and physically like we have and i thought it was quite interesting and um, he said at the it was asked about what his feelings were after the game the overriding feeling he said at the moment it's just frustration the feeling that we gave the game away in the second half and we fought really hard to be in the position that we were in um, and today was a critical moment to keep holding to keep digging for that dream when you play in these moments, you cannot do what we did in the second half. And then we have to look at if the team is capable of doing that when it comes to the biggest stage. A lot of things we have to analyse now and think about it because that cannot happen. So he's questioning his team there, I thought. And he hasn't done that before. You think back to the game against Everton when they lost Sean Dyche's first game in charge, at the 1-0 at Goodson Park. He came into the press conference after the game and his first thing he said was, I love the players even more after this. This this just makes me love them even more because I can see their response, blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. It was very, very different yesterday. He wasn't protecting the players at all. He was questioning them. And he hadn't really seen that before this season. I think he was really shocked by the, the, the performance. And again, he was asked, you know, has this season, despite the defeat, has it given you more conviction for the future that you're on the right path? And he said, in a sense, yes, but with the level that is required to fight for the Premier League and the way we want to fight to be in the Champions league and um it gives me a lot to think about so again he's just questioning i think the level of maybe the mentality not just from today yesterday's game but what's happened over the last few weeks the way they've surrendered points that they shouldn't have done i I think it's made him question a little bit exactly what he what this team is and um how far it can go and I think it was a definite message he was sending out yesterday pointing to the future Josh Kroenke was there he was there with Sean McVay the LA Rams coach actually who Arteta was quite close with um, and they went down into the changing room after the game and um, you know there'll be big big talks going on at Arsenal I think over the next few weeks in terms of the, the transfer market they've got some big plans no doubt about it they're going to strengthen no doubt about it and they're going to target real you know significant players and I kind of look at what Mikel said yesterday and saw what it was like afterwards. And I just think it's almost going to give him an even bigger kick up the backside to really demand a lot. I think he is going to demand a lot from the club this summer because he knows and he wants to compete in the Champions League. He doesn't want to go there just to be there. He wants to go and compete. And I think he probably realises that as great as this season has been, and it has been great, that there's still an awful long way to go for Arsenal to be right up there. And um, I think he's going to really demand that a lot happens this summer. And I thought that came across in his in his press conference yesterday. There's a couple more things he was asked. Um, 
he was asked about the City game, you know, did that have an impact? He said he didn't he, he didn't know. He just said in the second half we lost focus. Um we lost jewels and um he was asked if the team had run out of tea, steam and he said, I think we had the highest running stats in the league. So I don't think that was the case. I think even individually we were below par. It's easy to say they run out of steam. I've said it before. You know, whether the data backs that up, I don't know. But I think mentally more than anything, they've probably run out of steam. I think, you know, the way they've lost points in the last few weeks, you think to think back to some of the lost points. I think mentally it's definitely, I think just the relentlessness of Manchester City on their backs has just proven too much at the end of the day. And I'm still not buying into this Arsenal bottled thing. I and mean, you're going to get that. Any team's going to get that. It's just the way of the world is football fans. It's what, what happens? Rival fans are going to say, oh, you bottled it and all that. I don't think they have. I think Manchester City have won it. I think Arsenal have certainly made mistakes in this title running. But I think Manchester City, if, if City win their last couple of games, they would have won 15 games in a row, I think, which is basically half a season. They haven't even dropped a point. I mean, they're going to end up on about 95 points or something like that. It's not, I, I don't think, you can't accuse Arsenal of bottling it if the team finishes on 95 points and wins almost every single game of the second half of the season. It's just that City have won it. It's just what they do. And I think Arsenal will certainly look back and they'll have big, big regrets. And there's been key moments that they've messed up in this season. The the West Ham game, Saka's missed penalty, the Southampton game, definitely. You know, there's plenty of them you can look back on and you will look back on because it hurts right now and so you always look back on those what if moments and there's been a lot of them but I still I think at the end of the day when you look back on it and you and you sort of look at the season you just think City have just steamrolled it they've just been too good too relentless and Arsenal haven't been able to cope under that pressure um, and they're a young team they've got a young coach they've never been in this position before it looked for a time like they were they were able to handle it it looked like they were sort of brushing it off and taking it all um, as it goes. But ultimately, I think it's just proven a little bit too much for them. They couldn't couldn't cope and hopefully it'll stand them well in the future. And I think the lessons learned from it will, like I said, will push Arsenal on to really improve and go up another level in the summer. And it's been a good season. It's been a great season. It's been the funnest Arsenal season I can remember in a long, long time. But I don't think that quite... It doesn't help at the moment. I think there's still an overriding feeling of disappointment. I'm sure you're watching it. I'm sure you can probably see, feel that I, you can see and hear that I'm disappointed. But what can you do? It's, uh, it's move on. Another season's coming up and still two games to go. Finish as strong as possible and all that. Um, obviously, Martinelli was injured yesterday. That was a shame. It was weird. I mean, it was a tr- dreadful tackle by Casido. Didn't get booked. I mean, Martinelli should have been sent off, I think, before. I think the foul he did on Matoma, I think that's a red card. I think it was really dangerous. It was out of control. And uh, it was reckless, and I think he was really lucky. The fact he didn't get booked was laughable and summed up the referee. And then the fact that Casido didn't get booked for what was so blatantly a revenge tackle, and it's one that's ended up injuring Martinelli badly from behind. How that wasn't a booking either, it was just ridiculous. So the officials were so bad yesterday, and the fact that they just let everything go, just let the game become so scrappy because everyone was just fouling everyone because they knew they could get away with it it was just the second game in a row that Arsenal have had a referee that's lost control of the match and this time it led to Martinelli being injured which was just a joke really um he was out in a boot after the game protective boot Mikel didn't know he said he's going to go for a scan I saw the club physio spoke to some fans afterwards as he was leaving the game in his car and he's I think he said that he thinks he'll play again this season but I don't know having seen Martinelli yesterday walking around after the game in that protective boot I'd be surprised if he does but we'll wait and uh wait and see on that and um ultimately it doesn't really matter now but it's still a blow. You still want him to finish the season and be and play the last two games, but I'd be very surprised if we see that from Martinelli now. And um, and yeah, I thought Kivior, that was weird, Kivior for the first goal yesterday. I got hammered. I saw Roy Keane and uh, Jamie Carragher having a go. Carragher called it embarrassing, I think. And it was weird. I, think it was, yeah, I thought it was probably a foul, but I don't understand why he stayed down and fell down when the ball was still in play it kind of hurt that much you've got to stay on your feet surely if you do that he clears that header away and it stays at nil nil and maybe the game's different I thought it was a bit odd from Kivio. Uh but yeah all uh, all hindsight now all finished and anyway sorry it's been a really downbeat video but I don't know how I couldn't come on here and cheer everyone up because I'm as disappointed as all of you lot and as gutted as all of you lot today um, but I think this will last a while this feeling won't it and then we'll sort of start to look forward to next season and I think there is which is the good thing lots to look forward to when it comes to next season and lots to look forward to when it comes to this summer because it's been a good season a strong season a season that none of us were really expecting 
And uh, hopefully that Arsenal can build on that now. And that's the most important thing. It's about sort of backing Arteta in this summer, backing Edu as well, because I think Edu will try and be as demanding as Mikel Arteta will, getting a few really big players in, improving this squad, and then going again and trying to do it all over again next season. That's it from me, everyone. Have a good Monday. Have a good start to your week. Uh, forget about football for a couple of days, <laughs> and I'll speak to you soon.